Welcome to Hidden Riches. My name is Andrew Hill, and today's treasure comes again from Isaiah 8:20. I just wanted to do a part two very quickly with that initial video after watching it, because there's a couple things I wanted to add to that. The first thing I want to say is that when someone is prophesying, the prophecy and prophetic word should lead to Jesus in some way or another, whether directly or indirectly. The prophet's job or seer's job is to point back to Jesus. It's to point to him, his coming, his kingdom, his government, how he's ruling intimacy with him, getting to know him better. That is what a prophet is doing. The prophet is pulling the church in particular and sometimes the world or nations away from idolatry, um, adultery, and moving them towards faithfulness with God. That's that's a primary. So in the prophecy that's going forth, in prophecy that's going forth where there's edification, comfort, strengthening, encouragement, there should be some finger that points to uh, Jesus. In fact, sometimes in dreams and in visions, if there is a hand, uh, the first part of the hand, the thumb, is the apostle. Sometimes it's symbolic. It's symbolic of the fivefold ministry and the thumb that is at the base of the hand, which the other four are built upon as a foundation, is the apostle. But the one who is pointing in a direction is the prophet. And then it goes the evangelist, because the evangelist uh, is the furthest one out and can reach the farthest. And then a pastor and teacher, and a teacher is able to fit within the ear. And the pastor has the ring and relational uh, marriage, those kind of things, and the teacher, of course, can reach deeper into the ear. So with that said, the prophet is always pointing toward Jesus. Another thing is that no matter how strong the prophecy is, and if it's talking about plagues, if it's talking about disaster, uh, any of these things that the person is relaying from heaven, from God's perspective, we it sets up a prayer agenda. Prophecy is designed to set up a prayer agenda. This is a huge point. Because sometimes people will see prophecy as inevitable. But what God does is he relays his heart and he relays the future. He relays what's coming uh, and to give us some uh, foresight and to look ahead so that we might pray into that agenda. If it's a, He wants us to pray those things that are according to his word so that we don't pray amiss. And he wants us to pray against those things that would stand against his word. We want, he, wants to, he wants us to bind every thought that comes against the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And I hope I said that clearly enough. Uh, a third point is repentance. Repent is my favorite word in the Bible because it gives hope um, to believers and unbelievers alike. Sometimes believers have to repent. We need to turn away from what we're doing. And the New Testament letters that we read where the apostles are calling us to a holy lifestyle and a righteous lifestyle to, to stand in the position that we have been blessed and grace to stand in, they're talking to believers and they're using those terms of repent to wash your hands, you sinners, and to turn away. James actually uses that kind of language. Um, and so I love the word repent because it gives us hope and a second, third, fourth, fifth chance. Because without repentance, imagine if you went down the wrong road and there was no way to turn back. Imagine if you were going the wrong way and there wasn't even anyone to tell you and you just went clean off a cliff or you went around a curve and it's a dead end and you had a car accident. So that's what... Uh, part of the gospel does. There's a huge portion of the gospel that must have repentance in it. And prophecy many times calls us to repentance because there are things that are eclipsing our relationship with Jesus and they're standing between us and him. So that's part of the internal dawn. People who are speaking who have the light, Jesus Christ themselves within them, are speaking from a illuminated perspective. This is Ephesians 1.18 and, and Paul is praying for the church that her, the eyes of her heart would be filled with light or that they would be opened. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, is a song that we've sung for years. And so as he opens the eyes of our heart, he brings illumination and light into us. Proverbs twenty twenty seven says, The spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord, searching the innermost part of his being. And so the Lord uses the spirit to bring about illumination, the candle of the Lord, the lamp within uh, a person. Uh, the lamp that he holds, and he, and that's the place that he brings illumination. It's in the human spirit, and then the mind is edified and can follow in suit with what's going on inside. So when you receive a word, whether it's you hear the word in your with your spiritual ears and your spirit, or you see the word with the eyes of your heart through a vision, or uh, it causes your body to tremble. Isaiah sixty six says that, uh, that God is seeking those who tremble at His word. It causes you to have a physical reaction. No matter how you receive it, 
uh, that word is going to have within it a redemptive, uh, holy, hopeful quality built in to it. Uh, and that's the package of heaven is to see people turn to Jesus. How good is that? Love you guys.